So next, actually, we're going to show a video. Um, we do have a research organization. That's the organization that I lead under Ed Amoroso. We're doing security research. And what we do is we've just opened up a new center about a year ago in New York City. Take advantage of uh, people coming into New York City, uh, many of the local universities where there's quite a bit of talent in the area. Also, convenience to uh, customers and press and you know, people just being able to go to New York more easily. And so I have a, just a quick video that shows that, and then we'll have a few five-minute talks on some of the new concepts that we're working on in research area. So that's our location. We're eight blocks north of the World Trade Center and across the street from the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security. So it's an excellent location. Um, and you know, people are welcome to come visit. Just uh, give me a shout if you're in the area. So the next few talks, the first one is Wei Wang, who uh, joined PhD from Stevens. And she has um, a PhD from Stevens, I said, and uh, she just joined in 2010, as did all the people that are going to talk, really just joined re within the last year. So Wei is coming up on her first year anniversary in AT&T. So. Um, hi. Actually, I'm talking about, the, actually, this is my first project in AT&T, uh, which I started, like, about uh, 10 months ago. So, um, so here's the story. So we know, all know that malware can do all kinds of bad things, and also malware can uh, spread uh, from one device to another. So in this particular project, I'm working with my uh, two colleagues, Ilona and Jeff, to uh, try to detect the messaging-based malware propagation in our mobility network. So, so as a previous speaker, Patrick mentioned out that uh, nowadays there are many messages like uh, messaging-based malware like uh, in, in the field. And oops, sorry. Okay, oh, sorry about that. So. Uh, <laughs> So we all know that in the mobility world, because, uh, because uh, the, the, the people are really trusted their, uh, their friends and family when they're using messaging because um, the, the social uh, engineering. And, uh, and also people use the messaging like for all purposes, like everywhere, like uh, at any time. So we can imagine a case if the malware writer really using the messaging function to spread the malware. For example, a typical example is that when you download an application somewhere in the in Android or the Apple market, and uh, when you launch the application, and uh, maybe in the background, the malware like will read the contact book and, and uh, send messages to your friends, because your friends really trust you um, personally, and then when they follow the message, and maybe they click the link and follow the, the, the same approach and download the same piece of malicious software, and that's how the malware starts to spread in our, in our network. So in this project, we really uh, detected the, the such kind of uh, malware spreading. So we propose to deploy something um, on our device. So 
which is our agent numbers, but don't be afraid, we're not deploy a person, person in your, on your phone. So here, <laughs> so here uh, the, when the malware like, starts to uh, uh, spread, one of the message here, like in the green entry, so maybe one message will send to that person, to your friend, and then all, all the way through AT&T's network to uh, affect the phone on the, on the right. But if we, if we deploy something, like here, secret agent 007, which is in red, so that is actually our, is, is just one phone number. So if we have like one hidden entry uh, in the contact book, so for the user's point of view, the user will not see these numbers. So from the user point of view, they, they will not send messages to this number. But since the malware, because he lacked, it lacks the intelligence to tell the difference between uh, the number in red and all these numbers in the contact book. So with certain probability that the malware can select and hit the, the, the red number, and the red number actually that will terminate us at the AT&T Monitor Center. So when we first receive the message at, these, uh, at the Monitor Center, we can know, oh, something is going on because these messages are not supposed to do to go to these numbers, and we can start to do analysis. Um, maybe we can um, because we we received the exact message about this uh, in the in the uh, in the message, so we can um, maybe uh, do the filtering at the message center, and we can do all kinds of analysis. And uh, as the time evolves, as as we get more and more messages. For example, we have one and two, and then suddenly uh, a hundred and thousand. We can actually, uh, we developed a, a model that can, um, based on the message that received in the green line, we can estimate the total number of infected phones in our at and network. So that'd be very useful in terms of predicting how severe the whole problem is. So, um, so in summary, the system, actually we, we call it uh, a lightweight system because we, de we, we, we don't de deploy anything special on the phone but one or two phone numbers. So these phone numbers will be hidden from the user. So from the user point of view, it doesn't impact anything. But uh, we only have to deploy like two numbers on, on the phone and we only have to deploy maybe on the 15 or 10 or 15 percent of the whole population, so we don't deploy on every phone. And also, it's a faster detection because based on uh, probability analysis, so before hitting a dozens of phones, these, uh, these, these system will definitely catch at least one messages. So if the malware starts to spread, we will definitely know at the first, like, uh, very quickly and in a faster fashion. And the last thing is that we have potential to catch those like a zero zero day malware spreading because based on these techniques, we don't need to know any about anything about the signature of the malware at, as long as the malware starts to read the contacts and select the contacts to do the spreading, we can have the chance to catch it. And uh, the one update about the recent like Android market, actually the, 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 the malware like turn on your monitor and start to uh, spoof your um, privacy location and also privacy information and send messages to all your friends to, to, to embarrass you. So for those kind of situation, we we'll probably catch some interesting malware as well. So, uh, so in, in a nutshell, it's uh, something that we play with the probability in theory and uh, it's a little bit combination of uh, implementation because we prototype this in Android phone, and we also are planning to uh, prototype this, uh, uh, um, create an app on the uh, for the iPhone and for the Android phone to able to uh, in, uh, update these uh, secret agent number phone numbers as well. So it's a combination of implementation and a little bit of theory modeling. So it's really fun to be on the AT&T's security research team. Thanks. <laughs>